Thank you everyone for coming. Today we're going to talk about rethinking contact, contactless payments. Um, seemingly overnight, it's really nice to be back in person with everybody. Seemingly overnight last year, the world changed on a dime. And uh, contactless went from a nice to have to a need to have. And we have three experts on our panel today. Uh, first, we have Casey Siskin, Senior Vice President of Hawk. We have Ryan Hawking, Managing Partner of Secure Parking USA. And we have Kevin Wood, the Parking and Mobility Administrator of the Village of Port Jefferson, New York. So, we're going to let them tell us a thing or two, what they've learned in the last year and a half or so. And I'm going to start with the first question. Everyone's talking about contact. It's the buzzword at the moment, everyone's talking about it. What does it mean to you guys? Well, we can start with me because I'm holding this mic. <laughs> uh, so contactless uh, payments, contactless parking, uh, to me, is the obvious. You're using your, your appendage, what everybody is calling an appendage now, right? Of us, us human beings. And we're able to uh, use this to invoke a parking session and I really like to put the word control over the word contactless in that I think people feel and do have more control over the actual parking session. So it's not only contactless in the sense that you're not touching maybe a meter, especially in these times we're going through now, but also you have uh, a lot of control over that session and you have oh, that history, right? So you can look back over a year, this is where I park. So all those things to me mean contactless. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, I, I think there's a lot on there, to be honest, with how I view it as, the, um, as an extension of it. It's a journey that someone has to their parking. And that starts from their own home, through to the facility that they park at, leaving that on the pretty street, coming back and then um, exiting the garage and way home. And being able to control that journey um, and minimise the times that you have to touch, um, whether it be equipment, interact with other potential garage staff, um, obviously, health reasons have been the driver for that, um, but as we'll touch on, I think you've know, announced the convenience of that um, control um, throughout the journey is uh, very appealing to people. I want to touch on the word convenience because I think that that's what this is at the end of the day. It's the, you know, especially since COVID and what we've all been living through, we're going to now using our phones on a whole other level. So uh, the idea that I can go somewhere and I have to fiddle around, I just grab my phone, and he's able to just, you know, touch something, scan something, not touch obviously, <laughs> not the but using my phone, I can scan something, I can just press the buttons and be done. And I think that the ease of that and the convenience of that is really where we're at right now with the idea of contact. Because I think at the beginning it was, you didn't want to touch and we were using that. And I think it is a bit of a buzzword, but I really think at the end of the day it's the idea of the convenience of it all. You mentioned the uh, convenience. Um, I put a bunch of stats up there on the screen, and the stats basically say contactless has gone through the roof. Everyone wants it. You don't have to read it directly. Um, but my question is, is this because of COVID? Do you think this is the COVID thing? Do you think this ends after COVID? Did it start before COVID? What's, what's your take and what do you see in your world? So I think that COVID is sort of the catalyst. I think this was all happening long before. So we have certain products at Hong that we have developed and launched. You know, the idea of using the QR code we call it Hong Tap, the idea of using that to scan and pay for parking um, was pre-COVID. So we saw the writing on the wall as to where things were headed. Um, I think COVID has sort of increased, you know, you go to a restaurant now and you're using QR codes to scan instead of you in menu. So I think there's some things that have shifted from COVID that we are going to be using into the future, but the truth is, I think we're headed in that direction anyway. Yeah, I think as, um, as operators, and I'm in the private um, operator space, we've always actually had contactless options that we've sold as a premium product, whether it be um, RFID access to monthly parking sites. And that is a form of contactless, but previously we probably just referred to that as a, as a, as a product that people found um, convenient and we priced it as such. Um, in other countries as well, um, in, in China, for example, almost all transactions are done through WeChat Pay or AliPay, so those are contactless parking that have been around a lot longer, um, preceding COVID. So I think you're right, I think the, the, the framework, the, 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 the 
the basis was there in America with the technology, as we'll see tomorrow, the expo will just amaze the technology out there that has been um, to facilitate um, you know, companies and departments that want to embrace the technology. So um, if anything, the COVID has just given us a chance to maybe force those habits and for people to change their habits a bit quicker than they may have been in the past. So it's pretty exciting now that we've got the, the tools at our disposal to, um, to implement and create this. And Ryan, before you pass off the microphone, you've done some really interesting things around contactless that's um, about the entire customer journey throughout your entire facility. Can you give us a sense of some of the things that you've done? Yeah, okay. Um, it's, uh, I think at the end of the day, what I do in is it's other than maybe all the people in this room, I just find kind of a parking garage to look at it, everyone's going there to go to, to another um, destination. And so being able to facilitate and pair the parking with that ultimate destination or if it's like a community of interest that they're involved. I think when we realise that we're just a means to an end and we've got to kind of fit our infrastructure um, to that of those around us, um, it kind of changes the way you perceive um, the industry. And for for us, you know, that, that is a parking is a friction point. Um, I'm based in Milwaukee and you know, people will say there that oh, people in Milwaukee they just hate paying for parking rides. So like usually as it's global, right, everybody hates to do it. It's a grudge purchase, so we're trying to reduce that grudge and reduce the friction and the ease of uh, in and out through contact with us, whether it's license plate recognition, AI, you know, some of the stuff that's been developed is pretty amazing. Um, just reduces that and enables them to get to their final destination quicker. So we kind of try and focus on that and um, some results have been good. We've learned a few things along the way as well. Um, but ultimately, the, the technology is there now to, to do that really experience. Kevin? I would argue that this 74% is going to inch higher. I would, I would say the continuance is, it's got to be pretty close to 100% post-pandemic. Um, I, I don't think it was in any of our hands. I think it was pre-told that, that you know companies like Apple and Google were going to have us go this way, whether we liked it or not. Uh, as Casey said, the catalyst was COVID. Um, as you know, many people are building monstrous businesses um, based off this frictionless, contactless uh, new world we're in. So I think one of the unique things that um, I'm involved as being the administrator of a small village parking, we're able to have this ecosphere that we're able to see changes very, very quickly. And in some cases, control changes very quickly. Um, my, my, my sphere of influence is 600 spaces um, with 8,000 uh, cars every week. You can almost, it's almost exactly the same thing every week. So we, we really can see how things have changed more about that later. Well, let me ask you this question, because I know that in your city, in your village, you've done more than just parking with respect to contactless. Do you want to talk about how it's been proliferated throughout all sorts of things beyond the need for parking? Well, that's the future, what, I, what I'd like to see there. We're in a uh, small seaside village in um, Port Jefferson, New York, Long Island, New York, and um, we've seen well, we've really driven the change from meters to contactless parking. Um, very quickly, what we did was we literally eliminated meters, and so you can argue we forced people to go that way, but it was there was no force. I hate to use that word because it was really no force. We just eliminated meters when they broke down and didn't replace them, and so the idea was we replaced that with uh, a QR technology that Honk offers, and in doing so, we actually just benefited the parker because they were never more than 25 feet away from QR scanning, whereas they might have to walk 100 feet to see a meter. So it was a benefit uh, to the visitor right away. But in the future, what we'd like to see is uh, to be able to have that visitor because the same people over and over visit our village and some of the people and just be able to direct them uh, to maybe various sightseeing or restaurants or things like that. We think uh, that's the future. And one of the things, as you said, Michael, that we're doing is we're getting our merchants involved. Whereas, funny enough, they used to buy, come up to our village hall and buy a thousand literal coin tokens and hand them out. Imagine this, hand them out to their employees. And uh, that was very arduous and unaccountable. And now 
and we simply put a QR scan code next to the time clock when they come in, they scan, and that is all billable at the end of the month. So it's been a wonderful thing. We're going to, we're going to do more of that with our merchants in the village. Yeah, just to touch on that, I think when we talk about contactless as well, it's all, it's, it's all viewed in positive light, but I think there needs to be recognition that there's also it brings in more um, other operational tasks that need to be done. Um, if, you know, if you've got a gate side and then you're going to remove those and go a more contactless approach, um, or you're removing the machine that has a ticket, um, you're, you're forcing yourself to make sure the rest of your infrastructure and operations is able to um, meet with that technology that you've got there. Otherwise, you're going to obviously open yourself up for really, really good opportunities. And as Kevin was saying, he meant the without using the word forceful, but he made change um, happen because he removed the other option. I think you're never going to, you're never going to please everybody. Um, not everybody wants to pay with their phone or whatever the point of contact is under the contactless banner. But it's the same as a cash site. Not everybody wants to pay with cash. You can never please everyone. You just got to really pick your pick your path and stay true to it and, and, and go forward with it. And hopefully that the you know 95 percent are happy with it, and the other five percent will just. Um, They'll find parking somewhere else, maybe. You know, it's not good for us. So, you, you had something that I was going to save to the end, but I mean, since you, you opened the door, um, we're obviously all in this to make money. And you mentioned that, Kevin, you talked about pulling out machines, Ryan, you mentioned something about not, you know, please call people all the time. And certainly, I know that Casey wants to get as much of her contact with this payment solution in wherever she can. Um, what are your numbers doing? Do you find that this move has helped you, hurt you? Um, are your numbers the same, better, worse? It's, it's, I mean, it's a little bit hard now because you're, everything can look good bouncing back from last year. And we don't, but previously, you know, we look at parking facilities or just a retail store and prior to uh, the uptake of contactless parking, people were coming in and just buying the product of parking and leaving, we didn't know who they were. So now that we're obviously building data, which is obviously another buzzword that you know is a byproduct of all of this. I don't, I don't know if they were using that previously, and they just converted over if they knew. Since we've just revenues increased from a pretty awful base of last year, it's hard to know. I think though that the, the experience that they are receiving by these means is is enough to keep them coming back to your facilities. Um, so I think ongoing retention and the power that we have now with knowing who they are, what they're buying, upselling them, etc. Um, positions you well for long-term success that you previously would have had. So Michael, to answer your direct question, we're above post uh, pre-pandemic numbers, we're above that with um, visitations. But remember, we're a municipality, so we don't talk profits. We're not supposed to talk profits. We, we charge people to park so that the money from outside visitors goes to us improving our parking lots. Our residents don't pay for parking. Our visitors pay for parking. So the revenue we derive goes directly to improvement of, or adding parking lots. So you, we try to talk in terms of convenience, of, of a good experience coming to the village, because again, we, it's a village that people will come to to visit a restaurant, see the harbor, go on a ferry ride, that kind of thing. So in that regard, it's been a very big success. Yeah, I just want to touch on the idea of numbers and then also just around innovation. Because I know there's a lot of different people and different companies within this room. And I think when we talk about whether or not contactless payment is here to stay or whether COVID may have happened or whatever it is, but I, you know, I look back on the marketing industry over the last eight years that I've been in it and I, you know, where we came from when we started with these apps and now we, everybody's sort of shifting in a different direction because we know what's necessary and what's needed because the customers are telling us. And yes, society shifted and whatever, but I, you know, even during COVID, we sort of sat back as a company and thought, what's next? Like, how do we innovate from here? And what made sense to us was to look at the idea of the permit, the daily permit. Because are you necessarily parking at the office five days a week anymore. So is there something that meets you in the middle of that? And we developed a product that, um, you know, that would meet you in the middle, where you could buy a pack of parking. So it's time to buy a pack, something along those lines. And interestingly enough, 
I was, when you were talking about numbers, I'm just going to bring it back to that. We were at the university in, um, in DC that we were dealing with, and we launched a product, and we launched it with like a thousand minimum, uh, maximum, sorry, to see what would happen. And they sold out within like six days. Like, so clearly there's a level of innovation that needs to go on that we're all going to sort of jump into the fire here and see, but there's, there's a shift happening, and the customers are telling us what that shift is. Yeah, and I think the shift is now that we've got actual insight into the data of the, the habits of our consumers, we're able to now create products to, to meet them for what they need. And I think that and, and, and data is obviously a, a, a very popular word at this conference, and data can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I don't think there is one correct answer, and it depends on what, you know, what, what each company's outcome is. But we all of a sudden have access to information and been able to, the next challenge is going to be how to dissect that um, to actually get value out of it, whether it's monetary or, or customer service, maybe in Kevin's case. Um, and it's, you know, it's really like, it's like a pit crew, isn't it? You've got all this data coming up, but if you can't get the most out of it, it's just going to sit there and it's, it's going to be worthless. And so I kind of see that being the evolution of into where this goes and people get comfortable with that, kind of seeing all this data or their touch points or interactions that we have with the customers um, and using them to, to, to again advance the park and industry at the next level. Um, so a bunch of things have been brought up um, and you guys operate, you have mobile apps, you have a contactless express checkout, you have pay stations, you have parking meters. Um, how do you go about programming your your business, your facilities, and what are your customers demanding? Uh, how, do, how do you make these choices? There's there's a lot of choice and when we go to this convention tomorrow, I'm sure you'll see 10 more that we didn't even know about. So when you sit there as an operator running your municipality, running your private operator, yes, what do you think about it? Like, we'll think it a little different. We're not, we're not dealing from a standpoint of customers, but we are a conduit to bring customers to the businesses that are in the village. So I can only tell you, to be very frank, we would, if we were coming from the world, uh, again, if we're doing 8,000 parking sessions in a week, we would typically see lines of people waiting at meters, only to find out that that meter was not functioning, or out of paper, or broken. And that really bothered me. Personally, that bothered me a lot. I said, you know, how, how are we gonna fix this? And so, I mean, the simple, the simple thing, the other thing that happened was when we talk about apps, no, we don't, we don't have an app. We're, we're totally app agnostic, but because of the QR scan and at one time tap, we're not worried about that. I think that was also important because I was out in the streets listening to people saying, not another app, I don't want to download an app. I mean, you hear that a lot today. As a matter of fact, my phone is out of, uh, you know, space to download another app. So that was really important. So there's no such thing as lines anymore. Because as soon as you walk up to a meter that is functioning or a kiosk, there are several places for the customer to scan. And again, it's really important for our bills, it's getting that kind of volume, and we are getting that kind of volume. So that's not in every place, but that, that, that worked for us. I think in the, in the now space, the private space, we have to look at each facility on its own. Um, the commercial agreements in place that be least deal or a managed deal, we'll also dictate what we can and can't do. I think as a company we just have to be open-minded to the fact that this industry is um, is progressing at a very fast rate. I think I came to America seven years ago and I think it's, you know, at least was commonly agreed that America was maybe a bit slow in the uptake of technology in the the industry. Um, and what I've seen personally in the last seven years has been pretty dramatic. And what I you know, just today some of these videos that are on the walls out there, it's, again, it seems like there's another launch going um, in this industry. So I think, you know, there's getting up to speed with what's there now, um, but keeping my mind the future about to implement that. But I think from talking to all these technology companies, there seems to be a lot more willingness to work, there's a lot more sharing of information and integration. So I think if you, for those that are willing to embrace the technology for your plan, I think it's an exciting time. For us in this industry, ultimately the consumer should be pleased with the product that they get. Me, keep coming back to me, or keep um, staying with you.
So we're talking about new technology, and one of the questions um, that always comes up about new technology is how do you overcome barriers to adoption, right? We started off this talk talking about how contact has went from a nice to have to a need to have, seemingly overnight, and COVID did it. Um, what is your strategy? What are, again, what are your customers saying? How well are they adopting this? And what are you doing with barriers? What happens to the person who doesn't have a phone? What happens to the person who doesn't have a record? I'll just, before I hand this down, I'll just say that I, I you know, granted we are not working operators, and, but we are dealing with consumers, so I think that choice and selection is important. So I do believe, like, you know, you can excuse my language, you shit on the apps all day now that we have an app, so I don't want to go there, but I think that the apps are really important for the app user. I think that they are important for the person who's parking somewhere every single day. They want to pull out their phone and know that their app is there and their information is stored. You know, I go to Starbucks and I use my Starbucks app because I'm there a lot. Um, but then you have the person who wants the guest checkout, so you have the option of guest checkout. You have the person who, you know, who still may want to use it. It'll be interesting to hear what you say, Kevin, the PC station, but, you know, there are people who definitely are still sort of headed in that direction. So I think option is, is important. And, you know, the, the contactless options, uh, and, you know, as we move more and more into this world, are going to become more important. This is probably where we're headed. Yeah, I think the advantage and um, entanglement, but obviously the, the perceived, you know, people like it, uh, uh, the health risks um, that uh, have been played out at the moment was, was an initial kickstart for people to embrace this new technology they weren't already. Um, but I think once you have decided as a company that this is a path you're going to take and you want to convert more people over there to see the benefits um, of a means to reduce that friction of those barriers, you, know, you, you, you now have to put it in to incentivize. It might be special prize, it might be some sort of loyalty program that you've like, added on to that there to try and encourage people to move over. Because again, you've got the data and you're trying to you're selling yourself that once people have moved over there, the results are better financially and different from the consumer aspect. So, I think you have a lot of options to do it, not just in the health reasons. If they don't, then the health reasons hopefully go away. I don't think that it's going to drop off the usage of it because people now see the convenience of it. I think that's, uh, that's the most important sell of us now. So there's, there's some bluntness to this that um, I talk about, and, it's, and I don't mean to be mean when I say this, but um, sooner or later, the people that don't use cell phones won't be here with us anymore. Um, we are headed towards that. We're, they, I truly speak of these uh, these phones as appendages, and they're going to be more and more so, uh, for good or for bad. I'm not telling you I'm uh, completely pro uh, being with a, your phone, but we all are, and that's the truth. So that's one part of it. When I first started, we talk in terms of adoption rate. Every Monday, I get up and I and I run a report that shows me what percentage of people are paying for parking the old-fashioned way as opposed to the new contactless way. And that was less than 1% four years ago, and last week it was 54%. So that's, that's the direction we've committed to go to, from, from my position up to the administration, up to, to the mayor of our village. And we're not, we're not getting a lot of pushback. We were getting pushback when we weren't at critical mass. I think we're approaching what I would say would be the goal of critical mass of contactless parking. And I have to say, it's young and old. There are, there are many people that are very old, and once they do it once, they'll never go back to the old way of doing it. So um, that's a very real goal that's happening for, for visitors. I think you, had, you guys have hit on some really good points. Um, uh, one, I would agree that we've been dealing with this for 18 months, so what became a trend is now a habit. So I, I, I would agree that um, this trend isn't going anywhere. It started before the pandemic and is certainly going to continue after the pandemic. But you're also talking a lot about convenience. I try to push you on to profitability, and you talked about convenience. So in terms of running your operation, how important is offering choice, is offering these levels of convenience, is offering any which way they want to pay, uh, including the health and safety way. How important is that to you? So I want to describe again what we have. We have seven open lots. 
And so previously, if it was a 200 car lot, we would put three to five meters in that lot. And you would walk anywhere from 50 feet to 300 feet to a meter. And so now, in terms of convenience, instead of spending, spending $14,000 on a new physical meter to give the convenience to the customer, we are now able to put a QR scan less than 20 feet from the customer at really nothing in terms of cost, very, very little cost. And so that's super convenient and we're able to track that much better. Um, the meters that we have are not trackable in terms of being smart analytics. We haven't even gotten into that. How, how we can not only track, but also, um, you know, build new parking lots based on that. And I should mention, we just built a new parking lot. Uh, you'll get a kick out of this, it was 46 spaces. It cost $1.1 million. Depending on what market you're from, you might think that's a little or, or, or a lot, but the point is, that we laid the electric lines for that lot, thinking that somebody, the public, that's who we answered to, would want meters, and not one person has to use a meter. There are no meters in that parking lot. The electric lays there, we have one to put it there, but we haven't had to use it, and it's been over a year now. I put, I put some pictures up of, of your village. Okay. And that's all, all what you've done all around town. Yep. Um, we, what, what? I don't know if you know that you pay, I just want them to pay a part of my facilities from my first approach. Um, and once, but once we got there, I went ahead and put it how I've chosen to pay and able to to um, form a profile of who the customer is. Um, again, that's kind of the, the focus of us is if we can get the data and, and, and you know, build that profile and their spending habits and their marketing habits, that will enable me to create these new products to go back out to them remarket to them, um, to inform them that you know, there is a, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks are playing experts at like you come down to town because they know who they are. And with that there, you know, I'm going to bank on the repeat business and the loyalty as a, as a means of getting um, continued profits from that customer. So I'm not as worried about being like, can only pay this way. I just want that particular method of payment because there's obviously multiple options available in the marketplace to enable me to get the data to them to build that profile. That, but that's just, you know, how our philosophy we have afforded the ability by the private operators so, working most of the time out of what's out there. Um, and where do you think this is going? We talked about choice, we talked about convenience. This pandemic is hopefully over um, or ending very soon. Where, where do you see the future of all this? Yeah, I think we're all headed in, in a good, there's a good forward motion, I think. But I, I look at the industry and I see so much change and I see so much innovation and I see people trying so many different things, whether it's drive-in, drive-out, or, you know, QR codes, the, the idea of buying a pack of the, 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 you know, uh, cameras, like just all of these things, EV charging, the, the industry is changing so much and I think, um, I think, you know, I look at, like, for example, when we talk about COVID and what's going on, like, my parents know how to use QR codes. It would, it would even phase them to if something says behavior and scan here. They would just know how to do it. So there's no question that this is the path we're all um, we're moving towards. And I think it feels like the right path. Like, the, you know, um, I just would think that maybe different municipalities are going to start offering more apps. I would think that that's probably you won't just have one choice, there'll be multiple choices. I, 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 uh, I, I'm really starting to see more and more of that, and, and I just people are trying to request more and more of that, so it makes sense. You know, you've got your Visa MasterCard, your American Express, there's no reason why you go to any city across North America and you shouldn't have, you know, options of the state. I think that's probably well. Yeah, I, I think it's, I mean, in the next couple of days, we'll certainly showcase what's out there, but, um, it's going to be expanding on what links, you know, your wallet to a particular transaction, and you know, the identification component of it, and that can obviously be the vehicle with another plate, but it can be the vehicle just with the style and colour, as um, the technology enables that. Um, so I, I expect a continuation along, along those trends there um, to just further reduce the friction involved in a transaction of parking. You know, again, it's, I'm not going there to park, I'm going there to get somewhere else that we just want to get in, get to that destination, get out, and 
know, safe, easy uh, manner, uh, maybe even you know, lay out a bit of value add or even get a bit of thanks to what is on the thankless product. Um, and, and, and then certainly just move on. But, you know, if you'd asked me where we were seven years ago, where we are today, it's pretty, I find it quite hard to predict where we're going. There's a lot more smart people out here in the technology space um, developing um, that they want to they would kind of lead us to that path when it comes to from an operator perspective of us to choose to adapt um, that technology and set it fits with our, our work and our business plans going forward. You know, I have to give some examples. Uh, you know, last night I had Guy Ferreris and I, I sat down and uh, Guy sat down next to me and he goes, can you please pass the, the QR code? I mean, it's like insane. It's like, he didn't ask to pass them anyway. He passed this like, little triangle to him. Um, I went to a ball game the other day, Mets fan, everybody cares, and I couldn't spend cash, literally. I was not allowed to spend cash. The park, I had to use a credit card. When I got inside and bought a hat, I could not use cash. I had to put my cash in a machine, and out came a credit card after I put my cash in a machine. So, and Michael and I were talking, uh, before this we were talking about crypto, we were talking about smart contracts. This is where it is, this is where it's happening. It's just gonna be more and more. Um, and we're not even anywhere near critical mass yet. And so, my little microcosm of the world, that's where it's coming all over the place. So, the future is either going to be really crazy or exciting or both. Uh, it's it's going to be really incredible. I also think biometrics are going to play a big part of our transactions. Um, something that probably we won't control. Like I said, Apple or Google, those two big entities will probably bring us to the next phase of the cell phone. Well, we, we, now that you've been talking about the whole crypto conversation that we had, um, we also talked about um, kind of a vision for the future. A vision for the future in terms of is it hardware, is it software, is it cash, or is it credit or debit? Um, you know, and, and I think we, we, you know, just prior to this had a lot of uh, meeting in the minds. So do you want to give your thoughts on where, where you see certain things happening? I came from JFK Airport with $11 in my pocket. I have $11 in my pocket still. I mean, I think that says everything. I would have been frightened to travel without cash five years ago. I, I think that says it all right there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is the, the speed of the uptake of technology, you know, five years time, I've got, I've got no idea. Maybe the be able to get off back in New Zealand on the farm, milking cows, if everything goes to plan, because it's just a, um, it's so fast moving. Um, and I, I, you know, it's like I give a massive thanks to the, the people that are driving this technology. For us, simple operators, just to implement it on the side to offer it to the consumers. So you know, we just sit here patiently waiting for what all new things are coming out and just run with it where we can. Okay, uh, I've only got a few more things, and hopefully, uh, uh, there's a few questions in the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, but not many years ago, parking was a very labor intensive industry. And, you know, 10, 15, Plus years ago, 20 years ago, um, labor was uh, was issued for unattended payments. So it was cheaper to put a machine there than, um, than uh, apps came involved and now there's this express checkout. And, you know, uh, it's all about convenience, it's all about cost savings, it's all about frictionless. Um, so talking about the future, still about the future, um, do you envision a world where, you know, it is totally frictionless, contactless, drive in, drive out? T tell me a little bit about how you see that future evolving. I mean, I'm gonna be a bit controversial on this, because I don't, I see the future as being completely contactless. Um, you know, my husband is a big cash guy, he has to cash in his pocket all the time. <laughs> and he never uses it. It's just like that comfort level of having it there or something there, that old school of thought. So for like, I think he brought, we went to LA and he brought a ton of cash with him and we never used it once because we just don't anymore. Um, but in terms of the idea, so that's why I truly believe that that's the direction we're headed in, is just complete contact with But um, I'm not sure that it comes directly from the car. 
and that's an official statement because I don't know. Um, you know, I use my Apple Pay. You know, I use my. You know, I tap my cards. I tap my phone. I I do all of those things, and I really believe it's going to stay connected to my phone because that's not going away anytime soon. But am I connecting my car driving through? I don't know that. Um, that 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 that's necessarily where I'm headed in that direction. So I I, I don't see the future. Yeah, I know that this is controversial. So I know this is where all these car companies are headed. Um, but I don't know if the activity is happening there. So I, I think it'll always be on the phone. I think we're always going to be reverting back to that piece of machinery that we hold our hands 24 7. Um, that's kind of where I see it. I think there'll be multiple. I don't think it has to be one or the other. I think there'll be backups. Um, I think the car was the short thing. I think we're seeing it already now. Um, you go to places like, say, Singapore, and every car has a essentially like a roll a, a toll tag in their RFID being preloaded. Um, every parking operator has the same payment uh, system that is uh, processed through. Um, so that's just, you know, that's contactless for the cars with an RFID. So I think it will go down that way. I think it's going to be the consumer. Paying by the car being designed, as Kevin said, by your eyes or whatever it might be, but I think there's a variety of identifications linked to your transaction, and ultimately you're just going to choose each time what you want to use. Mike, I think part of the question you asked was expenses related to revenue and how that might be more efficient. And so, again, a real time example of what we were dealing with is we would have a mechanic. Somebody that had to be trained to go into machines and maintain them. And then there were a list of seven different items that were expenses related to a machine. Paper, CDMA costs, motor costs, parts, lights, lots, lots of different expenses related to that hardware. So fast forward this year, we pay high school kids, we call them parking ambassadors, and their sole purpose with their golf shirts on is to tell people it's okay to pay for parking with their cell phone. And that's exactly what they do all day long during their session, we call them parking ambassadors. So the point being, soon, one day they will go away. They might serve a different function by telling people where to eat and things like that. But again, I'm all about that conversion. So whatever it takes to get people to get comfortable and convert. And I see that in the numbers every week. So the other thing is just the cost of revenue is much, much less digitally. That's really what I want to uh, convey here. Um, and that's gonna get interesting because there'll be competitors, you know, worldwide, getting their digital money and whoever does it, the best or the least and the most efficient, that's gonna be a whole other world. All right, um, I know it looks like we have about five, six more minutes, so um, these folks have uh, given us a lot of good information in terms of how they implemented contactless. It seems as if you're better for it. Um, lots of positive experiences. Um, equal or greater revenue, lower costs is never a bad thing. Uh, certainly giving consumers what they want is a bad thing. Um, does anyone here have any questions that they want to ask? Oh, I see a question back there. Should I run and ask? Okay. Thank you. Hey, so I, I agree that tourists don't want to download an app and QR code. That's, that's great. Um, are, you, are you collecting any data on these customers so you can track where they're, they're coming from? It's, it's, it's a significant value in, for uh, Port Jefferson to really know where these tourists are. That's, that's the number one thing uh, I was talking to Michael about uh, before this, that I'd really love to know that. Uh, the only way we absolutely know that is if we happen to give him a ticket for uh, another reason. But at this given moment, we don't know exactly where they're coming from. We could surmise they're coming from different towns in and around Port Jefferson, but I see a wonderful opportunity in demographics of that. Uh, that, that's the question I'm going to with once a day, because it's like, what are you, what are you giving up in terms of making that, that you know, 30 seconds faster transaction by not making them download the app and get that data versus them having that data being able to communicate back to them? Um, and it's, you know, it, 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 I've been pretty hard in terms of saying make them download 
that was the guitars worth it in the long run to have to build that profile and go back to them. Um, I don't think it's that much of a friction point for them to do that. Um, I could be wrong, there's certain places where it might be major events that we might, I might say, you know, there's big lines, people are time sensitive, it's just like, here, don't worry about it today, get out of here. Maybe give them something back on the way back, they might say, you know, next time if you download that, there's 50% off, whatever it might be, but you've got to download that and incentivise them that way. So, uh, I'm with you, I think the card is worth more um, than speeding up for 30 seconds, but uh, I've seen a couple of years if we were right or wrong. There was a question over here first, and then it comes to the back. Is there somewhere over here still? No? Yeah? Hi, thank you. Um, so the title of the event is It's Time to Skip the App Store. So my question is, um, especially on street, how, how you are going to read or connect your, your phone with the space with that kind of Make the, the payment experience without an app. What, what is the future? What is going to replace you know, that? Uh, the question is, is if you're not downloading an app, I'm paraphrasing, but if you're not downloading an app, how are you delivering the payment experience without it? Particularly on street. On street. Oh, so, I mean, you can still use a QR on street, right? You can lock zones. So you can decide, it's like the same as the app, so if the app runs from this city block to this city block and that's the zone, the QR code can still represent that same zone. So there's no reason why cities can't, I mean, you can talk about Kevin Phillips that they have, they technically, you know, it's the same idea. Um, you just put a QR code in place, they can scan, and then you pay the QR it, It's similar to an app, it's just a guest check. It's yeah, it's just a guest check. Right. Right. For Kevin, what do you what did you see in the um, in the issuance of citations? Because that must have helped you sell this program. I'm assuming you saw a drop in citation issuance if you gave them more options to pay. That's true, actually. Yes, that's true. I think I think the point here was for the first time we were able to combine our meter sessions with our digital sessions and have those handhelds read both of those sessions. We had never had that before, um, and that was not fun, very frustrating. So we got that done uh, through this collaboration. The other thing I should mention, we are a pay-by-space environment, which is probably not the norm for those of you that are operators of park. Uh, we are not a pay-by-license plate. There are some advantages to that, and that we typically would get paid two and three times for a space because nobody knows that that person that left that space paid for that space for three hours. So they pay again for that space. Um, we didn't design it that way. I'm just telling you that we're a pay by space environment. And we probably will put a license plate eventually because it means more uh, down the line. Any other questions? Get it by Samson. So, I have a question about um, valet locations. What does uh, contactless look like in valet locations, especially when they're doing tips and splitting tips at the end of the day? How does that help you aggregate it? It's a great question, to be honest. Um, that's where it comes down to. You can't just, can't just do one. Uh, you can't just wait, you can't do relocation, it's going to be so different. You can't just say this is going to fit everything you have to adapt to contracts with the operations on site um, and depending on the user and the type of valet it is, it's, um, you, you might have to stay to a traditional method, there's some, which there's still some very really advanced technology in the space, but it might just not enable you to do the whole suite of products that you might want it otherwise. Now I'm on the right person to ask that the valet is not a core product of what we do, so um, for that reason exactly. There was a major ballet push in this industry. I think there was an entire parking conference focused on it at one point. And uh, I don't know that anyone's gotten there yet and figured it out 100%, because I think it is complicated. So, yeah. I think everyone's still working on it. And from, and, uh, from my perspective,
aspect of where your payments had, I think there's two kind of transactions in the world. There's an intended transaction, and there's an unintended transaction. And an intended transaction is always going to have um, more theater around it than an unintended transaction. And valet is, by its nature, just like a waiter at a restaurant is, is, you know, the food can be good, but if the waiter's bad, you didn't have a good experience. It's the same thing in valet. So an intended transaction, I think, will have a different payment flow. Because you have gratuity and everything that you have versus not a thing to be. We we obviously use um, Monka and many of our sites, and one of them we actually do um, caps a valley site, which uh, I must be correct in. <laughs> um, we do use a uh, valley the gratuity portion is a part of it, but it does work out and we managed to um, implement the tax scan portion of that into our value system. It can't collect the tip gratuity, but um, it does work out in a, um, a value setting and also a validation uh, system as well. It's, it works out. There's ways for that you guys can use um, Comptat for various things besides just daily parking transactions you have as a plan. Okay, we're gonna say that. <laughs> yeah. You plan to work. All right, we're coming up against our time. Are there any final questions? No, I hope, uh, hope you found it interesting. Ladies and gentlemen on the panel, do you have any party words before we wrap this up? I was good, I think. Uh, no, where I stand up as a seat earlier, one of the things I think it hasn't been ready for, but this is one of the most exciting times for our industry um, with the technology that we've got there and everybody is, is a lot of smart people in this industry. Um, maybe through the um, COVID, it's um, forced a lot of us to you know, start to um, blank canvas and how we're going to operate our businesses. Um, so I, I think the, the, the future is very bright for us. This, this discussion today about contacts is just one piece of it. Some other you know, important sessions that you know, are part of the whole flow process and ecosystem of our businesses. Um, but if we can hit you know, a home run and answer the bees, um, we'll, we'll ensure our industry stays relevant for a long time to come. My final word is thanks for listening to us. Those three years were great on the outside, and I'm sure we'll answer any questions you have after. <laughs> And uh, I'll just say yes, thank you very much for your time. And these are all the answers.